Hi, what's up everyone? This is Josh Krieger, one of the co-hosts of Edge of NFT, and I'm so excited to be here with Yoshi, Game Partnership Lead at Clayton. Hello guys. We're, we're going to talk about some really fun stuff and uh, really excited to expose our listeners to all the amazing things that not only Clayton is doing coming up, but what they've done in their history. This is a blockchain solution that everyone really needs to learn more about. Um, uh, I've been here a couple of days. How, how about yourself? Um, I've been here a couple of days too. I'm having a little bit of jet lag. Yeah, yeah. So we're both trying an experiment here. This is Kofi Chan. This is tea uh, and coffee. Very good. Cheers. Cheers. Um, some of the locals here recommend this to us. So we're. I had a power nap. I think we're doing all right. Yeah. All good. things considered, and uh, excited to come to Seoul, Korea next week. Uh, we got this really fun roadshow we're doing. This is my first time in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just great to, to meet with you. You're, you're one of our first interviews. Thanks to the Asia Blockchain Gaming Alliance for having us together. They have a great event going on uh, out of these doors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's get down to it, man. How did you get involved in, in blockchain? And tell us about your Clayton legacy story because you've known about these guys since, since your teenage years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I grew up in Korea um, as just a normal kid. Um, and then like one day like you know Samsung they release this idea called smartphones and they say like you can you can you know access all these types of different apps um, I wasn't aware of like those ideas you know back in I think elementary or middle school but everyone starts using this messenger app called Kakao and um, our mother company Kakao uh, with a K Kakao with a K because Korea starts with a K um, and I, I started using this app and it was it was phenomenal because Back then, you know, my mom wouldn't let me, you know, send more than 200 messages a month because it costs you more money. But with Kakao, if you're connected to an internet, like you can send, you know, free messages, but also like pictures and videos and everything. So what was her excuse then for you to like still get your homework done and everything after that? Mm -hmm. Like she, she was out of, uh, you know, bullets. Yeah, she was out of bullets. I still got my uh, my homework done. I was a pretty good student, so uh, I guess like she didn't care as long as I don't incur more costs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very practical. Yes, and then you know I went abroad to study in uh, D.C., uh, Washington, and oh cool, mm -hmm. that, I, I I lived there after uh, graduating college. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I went to Georgetown, and um, you know the living expense there is like crazy, right? Oh yeah, so, especially Georgetown itself. Yeah, <laughs> that's the eighteen dollar hamburger. Ah oh, yes, it's it's it was phenomenal. And um, you know when I, when I want to call my parents or friends back home, you know I would still use Kakao. And you know back then I would just see this as just uh, as a good service. I didn't look really deep into its bringing, but later I kind of realized that hey, like this is really cool. Like when did Kakao come to realization that? Um, mobile internet is going to be really successful and used by the masses that they come up with this idea of bringing you know free messenger um, to the Korean population and I, I kind of grew this admiration for this company um, later after graduating from college but but, mm -hmm. but you weren't the only one I mean they, they, this this mm -hmm. product went viral right 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 um, 99 percent 97 percent penetration rate in Korea so absolutely incredible yeah the norm in Korea is like just talk me which means like send me a cacao talk so it's it's that okay, you know prevalent. part of the dictionary for for Korea culture right of course of course and um, you know I kind of grew really like you know this admire for this company because they, you know, um, they expanded based on that messenger because they had this community of users. They started rolling out like taxi hailing and payments and banking, everything that you can imagine. Um, and they dating. Really they get into dating. Dating kind of happens sure. casually. I'm not sure if there's cacao Tinder, but um, <laughs> you know, once you start dating, you probably use cacao and send like really yeah. You can pictures. you can do the home cooking and all that <laughs> stuff with it. Right. It's right. part of culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then um, after graduating from college, I actually wanted to go to like a blood delivery company in Uganda. So wow. Um, because I was kind of inspired by the idea of like. You know, actually, like doing work that changes people's lives. So I thought, you know, like those dramatic ones about like you know delivering blood or like saving lives were what matters. But somehow I came back to Korea. Um, I was kind of looking for jobs to kind of apply for, and then um, 
I realized that Kakao was employing um, people to build a blockchain platform. And I was like, yeah, like these guys, they're really well in the Web2 space. I think they're going to do really well in Web3 as well. It's going to be worthwhile. So that's why I joined in roughly 2017. So it's, I think, my fourth or fifth year um, with Clayton. Um, in the process, you know, um, we've been having pretty big achievements and small achievements as well. But we're, we're getting there. Um, we're trying to have blockchain um, adopted by the masses, not only in the Korea market, but maybe further to the East Asian market and possibly globally. So I think that's the vision we have. And we've been uh, engaging in a lot of endeavors to make this happen. Um, right now, I'm leading the game partnership side of Clayton. And we are heavily kind of um, convinced with the idea that games will be the spearhead for global mass adoption of blockchain, whether that be Clayton or any other mainnet. Um, you know, our focus is like, let's get this technology, you know, known to people um, first. That's what really matters at the moment. Well, look, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. gaming was the sort of uh, early adopter mm -hmm. of concepts that we call NFTs now in terms of skins and, mm -hmm. and everything. And the idea of in-game assets um, has been part of gaming for, mm -hmm. for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that makes sense. That's why we're excited to do a big uh, gaming event November 14th in LA, mm -hmm. just to bring people together on, and on where this all goes. When, when I look around in Singapore at these different events we're going to, gaming just keeps coming up over and mm -hmm. over again, right? Mm -hmm. That's very true. Um, I, I think it makes a lot of sense because um, you know history repeats itself and um, when we look back at how Kakao succeeded into like the most dominant messenger app, they launched a, a very simple like um, kind of Tetris kind of game on their messenger. It was called Anypong. And what, what it does is like they let you play maybe like 10 games for free, but then once you run out of the so-called energy, like you have to go and ask your friends to send you um, more energy. And that way, you know, back then, you know, in maybe early 2000s, um, this kind of community kind of concept um, in the gaming space was very, uh, very new. And so while the game itself is very simple, the messenger was able to succeed because people were starting to interact on the mobile space on Web2. And so we have the idea that, hey, like people are usually intrigued with entertainment uh, aspects. Um, giving them raw blockchain is definitely not going to work. They're not going to be able to kind of digest it. So let's put it in the form of a game and add um, kind of community features to the game so that more and more people start kind of enjoying this as a group. Um, so that's what we're kind of pushing at the moment. That's cool. And is that game mobile uh, only or mobile and computer? Uh -huh. Is it an app that you download? The Anypong was like a mobile web. So uh, it was embedded inside the Kakao Messenger app. So um, people had to kind of access Kakao Messenger to play it, which also significantly contributed to Kakao's growth because everyone had to kind of basically log in to Kakao to play the game. And so that tactic was very successful. Um, I think business or strategy, it transcends time and um, region. Um, the essence stays the same. So people talk about like, oh, you know, like the way p business is done on Web3 is different. I agree to some point, but I still think that, you know, the essence of like doing business never changes. And mm -hmm. so on Web3, it's probably going to be the same. We need a killer application or service that lures um, Web2 people to kind of join this movement of Web3. And once we have that traction going on, it's just going to snowball really big. And so um, Clayton, we've been shooting really hard for the past four years to not only found the infrastructure to kind of make the overall you know, user experience very comfortable, but also to have that one killer application to kind of bring the spiral um, coming. And I'm hoping that that service would come out maybe by end of this year. Um, we have really good services um, getting prepped to be launched on Clayton by end of this year. That's great. And mm -hmm. currently, um, is Clayton accessible globally? Like in the U.S., can I can I access 
Clayton as well? Yeah, um, well, Clayton is open source public mainnet, so anyone can access um, by installing the Kaikas wallet. Um, we do have a KYC like custodial wallet embedded inside Kakao Messenger app for Korean users. But um, for global users, they can still install Kaikas. So it's like the MetaMask equivalent on, on Clayton. And um, they can definitely enjoy all sorts of games. Um, once they have the wallet, they should also um, have Clay as, um, to pay gas fees. Um, we're not as much listed on, you know, in Western markets as we are in, in the East, but still there are probably ways to, to get them. So mm -hmm. we're trying hard to kind of improve our liquidity in the Western markets though. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys are doing around um, gaming and, and sort of uh, supporting the, the Web3 game culture. Can you point to any specific examples of collaborations that are have happened or are coming up? Yeah, so um, just naming out the partners that we've been closely working uh, with um, in the past six months or so. Um, globally, um, we've been working hard with uh, Reign of Terror and um, uh, DeFi Kingdoms and uh, uh, many other like um, just indie kind of mid-sized uh, games that are willing to build on Clayton. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a huge partnership though. I mean, DeFi Kingdoms came out of nowhere <laughs> and, and, and you know, talk about mm -hmm. you know, an addictive product. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a user and, and a lot of my friends are, are users of, of DeFi Kingdoms and mm -hmm. I guess they had um, a bit of a challenge with Harmony that you guys are, are supporting um, sort of a recovery effort, right? Right, right. Um, they were, um, we were kind of uh, very glad to hear from the, um, from the DeFi Kingdoms team that they were looking to expand their presence to, you know, the Asian market. And they were thinking that, you know, Clayton would be the number one choice in terms of, you know, um, going to the East. Um, and we were very welcoming that idea because that is very true. Um, regulatory, in regulatory uh, terms, like um, China is under strict regulation in terms of blockchain games. Um, Japan's a little bit, you know, um, looking into this space just starting now. Um, so I think Korea is the right market to start off if you want to come to Asia. Um, especially like given the Korean population who's, they're all just um, crazy to play games. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, going to PC cafes every, every day, like after school. So um, I think it was a good fit. Um, they're moving their Serendale, the biggest um, game space um, on DeFi Kingdoms onto Clayton. So probably by end of this year, we should be having, you know, Serendale users um, using Clayton as their blockchain. Um, that's pretty exciting. Um, um, we also have Reign of Terror team. They're X Tencent um, game like experts, and they're building a like a MMORPG game on Clayton as well. So that's going to roll out very soon too. They're having an NFT drop um, probably by October or November. So I would definitely stay tuned for that as well. Well, those are two exciting partnerships, mm -hmm. and I think it's helpful for, for folks listening to this uh, podcast to understand, um, you know, that Clayton is, is open for business in terms mm -hmm. of collaboration mm -hmm. and co-creation mm -hmm. globally. Mm -hmm. How do, like, what's the best steps for folks to take if, if they want to sort of explore collaborating with Clayton? Um, you know, like, I think trying out the service um, would be the best effort or, like, the best way to experience Clayton and to kind of feel how this network is so much different from other existing mainnets. Um, I would suggest trying out uh, games, um, DeFi Kingdoms or Reign of Terror, they're all good one, once they come out. But also we have um, games called Nino Kuni and um, A3 Still Alive. Um, on Clayton, currently running um, on Clayton mainnet at the moment. Um, I'm suggesting these two because um, it's been built by a company called Netmarble. Um, so it's one of the three biggest game companies in Korea, and it's one of the biggest companies for game publishing um, throughout East Asia as well. So these games, like one title would normally get, um, you know, three to five million MAU um, once they roll out. Um, and so they, they have, you know, 
um, they're, they're fact-checked in a way that their game quality is really good. Um, and if you try it out, there are blockchain aspects that they integrated on Clayton. Um, you should be able to feel how seamless it is um, when it runs on Clayton because we have one second block finality and we have uh, fee delegation features, which greatly, greatly improves both user experience and developer experience. Yeah, that, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I, I, just to kind of recap what mm -hmm. we've talked about here, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. you've got this incredibly dominant and mm -hmm. successful Web2 Messenger mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. that has sort of taken a shot at Web3 in a major way, mm -hmm. built their own blockchain, mm -hmm. and is partnering with some of the biggest players in the space in gaming, mm -hmm. and is just ready to do more in the space and mm -hmm. excited to, to collaborate. That is very true. Um, we think that you know a platform can be very powerful, but um, for the platform to be powerful, you know what really comes first is a service. Like any service that can really attract the mass users, that's going to be the kind of kill killer um, that you know um, places one platform above others. So that's why we've been focusing really hard to get really good quality services running on our mainnet. Um, regarding the cacao part, um, it is true that cacao is, you know, deeply affiliated um, and supporting our platform. But we're trying our best to kind of decentralize our mainnet so that it stay true to stay true to like the blockchain ideal. Um, but we're not willing to sacrifice um, sacrifice like you you know like our platform's effectiveness or our, our platform's technical like you know um, uh, advantages um, for the sake of just decentralization. Um, there are arguments about you know how much decentralized a platform should be, um, and some people may argue that you know a platform has to be fully decentralized. But once it is, it just becomes very slow and very expensive. Yeah. So it might work for some services that doesn't require quick speed or you know doesn't require like low gas fees but for us we think that it's critical like getting these uh, services with cheap gas costs and really low latency is very important for you know top quality companies to start adopting blockchain um, once you know Technology improves even better later, so that even decent, even with decentralization, you know maybe gas fees can stay low and latency can still, you know, stay uh, very low. Um, you would be willing to adopt more like decentralization, but at this point, we think we're at the optimal point to lure more Web two companies to start adopting blockchain. Yeah, mm -hmm. that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Just to take a step back, mm -hmm. um, you know, we often like to uh, understand from our, our guests like what inspires them in the space, and in particular, um, what we're seeing in the U.S. is a major focus on film three, entertainment, mm -hmm. big brand integration. Um, is that happening in Korea too? Do you see that convergence of of, of all these technologies with, with major entertainment and big brands, and what what sort of inspires you in the space beyond that? Yeah, um, so like in terms of our collaboration with uh, big brands, um, Kakao itself is pretty big, and so like the messenger um, that has the wallet embedded, like our wallet embedded inside it is has been quite phenomenal in the Korea market, but. Um, we adopted a POS algorithm model, which means um, we have a very selected number of governance council nodes um, that allow us to be faster and cheaper. And these nodes are not just, you know, um, just random individuals that we do not know of. These are actually like companies that hold killer IPs. Um, we have entertainment companies like Kakao Entertainment. We also have like Binance, Jump, and Sigma and Netmarble, um, game companies with huge IPs that so you've are been collab you, network. I mean, you are a big brand, but you've been collaborating with big brands for, for a while. So this is right. like a natural thing, what, right. what, what we're talking about here. Right. In fact, um, towards the end of this year, um, Netmarble, um, the MarbleX is their crypto subsidiary's name. They are going to launch a P2E version of a game that had 10 million MEU um, in the Web2 version. 
So it's called Let's Get Rich. So it's kind of like um, a Korean version or Asian version of um, Monopoly. Nice. Um, and they had, uh, like globally, when they launched uh, a couple of years ago, the Web2 version, it had 10 million MAU. Um, we usually have 20%, 10% of that Web2 user base switching over to Web3. So, so you can buy land mm -hmm. um, in, in Korea, or, or is there a particular, or is it just a global property, real estate they're, empire you're building? Yeah, um, they're kind of still kind of planning out, sorting right. this out a little bit from, um, from um, right now. But the, I guess we got the metaverse. You could buy land in the metaverse too now. Yeah, the, the last update I got was that they're going to map the game with actual space around the world. Um, um, so that if a user actually buys a land in the game, it corresponds with their land ownership, um, you know, in, in in the real world. Of course, they're not buying you know land in the real world, but it just gives them a feeling that you know they have a chunk of, say, like an Eiffel Tower, or they have a, a chunk of like the Colosseum. So um, they're trying to map the virtual kind of map with you know um, what really exists in the real world. And so, gamify it. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. And then my other question was just outside of um, what you're doing in Clayton, mm -hmm. what inspires you that you're seeing in the Web3 space? Um, my biggest inspiration is basically like um, assets being, um, you know, being able to transcend um, from, you know, this virtual realm to like reality. Um, I think the kind of, uh, the kind of um, borderline between you know, um, virtual space and like reality is kind of like crumbling down at the moment. We still have a, a really long way to go, but uh, case in point, um, the, the scholarship model that was very popular last year was very intriguing because um, the, the game that adopted the scholarship model was successful too, but I think that model itself was very interesting because people come to a realization that you can actually start making money in the virtual space. That's because um, digital assets are more and more recognized as, you know, um, as property. Um, sure. And this trend is going to continue um, through, I guess, mediums such as um, NFTs. Um, what I'm very inspired to look forward to um, occurring in the blockchain space is kind of like the economy that you see in um, Ready Player One. Have you seen the movie? Yeah, of course. Like um, all these IPs, they just uh, interchange in one platform and people start, you know, trading their, their in-game items with each other for money. Um, some people are going out to kind of gather money to buy more items to sell for, you know, real money. Like, like this kind of uh, change is, is very interesting um, from my perspective um, and I, I really look forward to that happening. Um, we have, I'm, I'm on the game side, but um, on Clayton there are also um, art projects that are kind of moving towards this direction. So for example, like let's say like a, a very well-drawn, like popular painting costs a million dollars. Um, not many, you know, just individual can purchase a $1 million pa painting. But if you can kind of cut that to 100 pieces so that, you know, one piece costs, you know, um, um, just, just at, at a very affordable amount, um, people can start actually entering um, this, this type of investment. So, like, blockchain is able to kind of lower the hurdle for investors who are interested in participating in these kinds of um, investment opportunities. Um, given, um, I think, maybe in five, 10 years, once you know, regulations start kind of giving us proper guidelines, I think it would be actually possible for people to get loans by putting their NFTs as deposits. Um, you know, like this hyper liquidity is going to happen um, in the next few years and I'm really looking forward to that because it's an opportunity for creators, studios and users to actually benefit from this new type of technology. Absolutely, uh, definitely excited about what's to come in that regard. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, if folks want to learn more about Clayton and, and stay in touch, uh, where do they go? Um, it's very simple. Um, we have our website, uh, Clayton.com. So if you visit Clayton.com, you should be able to see all the uh, ecosystem partners and the tech stack that we provide. Um, we also have our official Twitter, um, Clayton um, underbar official. So you should be able to see our recent news there as well. And cool. We Are you on Twitter as well? Yes, I am, but I forgot my ID. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pass that on and we'll get you some Twitter love as well. Awesome. Yoshi, thanks so much for spending some time Thank together. You, uh, yeah. We can make it through this week. We'll get a time zone adjusted, mm -hmm. hopefully before we leave. Yes. Cheers, my friend. All right, cheers. Thank you, Josh. All right. <laughs>